Okay, let's work on some vector identities where part of the operation involves a Dell operator. Um, you know from the past videos that the Dell operator can function as an independent operator in its own right, or an independent vector in its own right, so we can take the dot product of the Dell operator with other vectors, and we can take the cross product of the Dell operator with other vectors. Now, as far as a direct operation, it can only operate directly on scalar quantities. As we've established in other videos, if this was a vector here, that makes no sense. Likewise, if we had, say, a scalar times a vector, we could not operate directly on that expression. Those are nonsensical. What we want to address in this video is, suppose that we're going to take the dot product of the del operator, not just with another vector, but with the scalar times that vector. So we have this. Or perhaps we would have the cross product. Like this. Now, if you've watched the introductory videos, you know that if our vector f looks like this, say, has these components, where these components, f1, f2, and f3, these are not constant numbers, these are continuously changing, and you take the dot product of the del operator with that vector, you get what's called the divergence, and that has this expression. So we have these partial derivatives. That's what we get. But here we have a scalar times that vector. So what do we get in this kind of a situation? Well, before we answer that question directly, let's think of this kind of a situation. Suppose we have two terms multiplied together, and we're going to take the derivative. Then we know that this would be equal to, one of them is held constant, and we take the derivative of the other one, or the other one gets held constant, and we take the other derivative. Or we could write it like this if we wanted to. Plus this. Well, here all we are saying is that we have the we have this two, the product of u times v. This, here we have the product of u times v. Here we have a differentiation operator. It operates only on the u part of the product. And here, this operates only on the v part of the product. And we introduce this line of thinking because for our problem, we have this. Okay, let's just make some room here because we're going to need it. Our problem is this. Well, can we think of it along these lines? This equals, we're not stating it, we're asking it, say, del operating only on phi dot phi f plus Del operating only on F of GF. We saw that we could use that kind of symbolism when we were taking the derivative of the two products. Well, the del operator, after all, is a differentiation operator. So, is this a valid expression? Well, if we look at this further, what exactly does this mean, and what exactly does this mean? So we look at this, we can't have, if this is operating only on phi, 
you cannot take the dot product of del dot phi, because phi is just a scalar, so that doesn't work. So the only way that we could have del operating only on phi would be if we had it like this. Operates correctly on phi, and we take that dot product with the vector f. And here, now del operates only on the vector f. So in this situation, we would have del dot f, and it's just going to be multiplied by phi. So this gives us this expression. This gives us this expression. Now, does that, in fact, really equal this quantity? This is really a valid expression. Well, let's see. Instead of just trying to take this funny business here, let's just approach this directly and see what we get. So, del dot Cf and what is del? The partial with respect to x times i plus the partial with respect to y times j plus the partial with respect to z times k and we're going to take a dot product that of phi times f. So phi times f is just going to be phi times this term, and this term, and this term. So we're going to have phi f1i plus phi f2j plus phi f sub 3 times k. And what we're going to do, oh, that's right, we need the dot part between these. So, here we have i dot i, that's 1. So here then we have the partial with respect to x of phi times f1. So this equals partial with respect to x of phi times f1. Plus the partial with respect to y, as we continue taking our dot product, j dot j, that's 1, partial with respect to y of phi f2. Plus the partial with respect to z of phi f3. And we can break these apart. So this is going to be equal to here then we're going to have F1 times the partial of phi with respect to x plus phi times the partial of F1 with respect to x. That's from this term. Now from this term we're going to have plus F2 times the partial of phi with respect to y plus phi times the partial of F2 with respect to y. And from the last term, from this last expression, we get two more terms. We have F3 the partial of phi with respect to z plus z times the partial of f3 with respect to z. And we know for a fact, because we get it by the numbers, that is what that is equal to. Now, what we want to do is look at these terms very closely here. We've got six of them that we have to wade through. And we may not have time during this video to take this all the way through to the end. So 
Let's stop the video right here and come back. Join us in the next video and we'll pick off, we'll pick up right from this point here and see what kind of expression we get from all these different terms. So come back, join us for the rest of the video and let's finish this problem.